What's up everybody, welcome back to another episode of All The Mods Expert Mode. Oh yeah guys, so last episode we were working towards getting blank runes. We ended the episode with crafting one or two of these things, I think, on our runic altar from Batania. Couldn't think of that for a second. Uh, but yeah, I went ahead and I crafted the rest of these guys here. So yeah, we have a lot of these. Um, so I just replaced the blocks around our altar to make it into a tier two. It's tier one just by itself. Tier two, if you have a ring of the blank runes around it. And yeah, I saw that we had some life essence left in the blood altar. So I just ran some blank slates through there, or I guess uh, dark stone to turn into blank slates. Uh, so we got that done. And then I saw there was a little bit left and I went to put my blood orb in there, my weak blood orb to suck out the rest of that and put it into my LP network, but it's not doing anything. <laughs> so pretty much what we need to do right now, we need to make ourselves a divination sigil, right? So this will allow us to see how much is in the altar. We can right click on it. We can see what tier the altar is. If we right click it in the air, we can see how much is in our LP network. The thing that we just can't see at all. We need this in order to know about that. So in order to make one of those, we have to do an alchemic alchemy array right so we need a redstone plus a blank slate to make one of these but we need arcane ashes in order to perform this process the arcane ashes are made in the hellfire forge right so we can use a tartaric gem or demonic will plus white dye redstone gunpowder coal that's not that big of a deal we need to make a hellfire forge so to make the hellfire forge we need abyssal stone we need this exact theum brick, however you pronounce that, man of steel block and refined corallium ingot. So the refined corallium ingots, we've seen this before. So we need a chunk of corallium plus an abyssal stone. So that is nine times eight corallium gems that we need to mine up. In order to get one of those, we smelt this, we get the ingot, right? Not a big deal. Uh, this brick stuff comes from a transmutation. So we need the transmute, the transmutator plus end stone to get this, right? So the transmutator, I'm having problems saying that, uh, we need two blocks of refined corallium, which is these ingots again, which is these guys, the chunks, which is nine times eight per. <laughs> so yeah, it gets a little expensive. So I think that's 162, about two and a half stacks in order to get these two blocks of those corallium gems in order to make those. Uh, we need the liquid corallium, we, got, we saw that in that other dimension. We also need these Corallium bricks, which comes from the Corallium stone, which comes from Corallium cobblestone, which I assume, since there is no recipe for that, I assume that's in that other dimension as well. So anyway, we have a lot of things to do. First things first, the very first thing we need to do before we can even get started doing any of this stuff is we need that Corallium stuff. Uh, I think 162 is what I said, plus probably another nine more. Maybe more than that. I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, uh, yeah, we only have 42. That's not that's not gonna do it. Uh, so we need to go get ourselves more of that. So that stuff is mined, I do believe, in the wet biomes. I guess I'll charge up my wand here. Yeah, we've mined a lot of it over in the swamp. We had the corallium infested swamp where I went over there and mined that stuff previously. So that is where I'm gonna head now. I think that is, yeah, to the east here, a little southeast. Um, yeah, this is the area where I've mined it. That's our little hole down into the ground where I've been mining. I'm going to grab some torches. I'm going to do a lot of mining over here. We need a lot of this stuff. So that is the next task. Hopefully I can get quite a lot of that and we won't have to worry about it again. I do need to make sure I bring enough torches though. So I don't have to come back here then. Well, you know what, what I should do, I should just grab some coal. This stuff will be fine and some logs, that stuff will be fine. Yeah, I should grab all that stuff. We can put our blank runes away, blank slate. Yeah, all right, so I'm gonna head over there. I'm gonna do some mining and we'll be back, guys. All right, well, I got back from mining and yeah, we had mined like two stacks plus one of these Corellium gems. I was like, wait a second, how is that gonna add up to be the correct amount, right? So it is nine of these to make one of these, right? We need eight of those. We get seven per stack. We need eight of these in order to make one ingot. Well, I guess two ingots. You get two per uh, one of those things. Yeah, I did not math that correctly. <laughs> I, 
I mapped it enough for one of these, but not for nine of those, which we're going to need. Uh, so, hmm, we need a lot more of these. So I just got done spending, I don't know, a good 30, 45 minutes to get this amount mining by hand. We did get a lot of good resources though, right? So it's not all lost. It's not all for nothing, but we do have a quarry, which is getting resources for us. Yeah, the quarry can also quarry in the swamp and get these gems for us too. So what we need to do, let's get a drawer. We need one of these basic drawers. So when our quarry mines, it's going to mine those ores, right? Uh, and then we're going to need a place for those to go. So we're going to move our quarry from where it currently is. I don't even remember where it is, but we're going to move it from there. <laughs> oh, snowballs. Mushrooms. There we go. Yeah, we're going to move it from there so it will go into the swamp and start mining things and getting our Corallium gems for us because I cannot take the time that it's going to require to mine those all by hand. <laughs> yeah, it's just going to take far too long. So uh, it is now nighttime. Let's sleep. I was kind of waiting for nighttime to sleep so we could get rid of the rain as well. I don't remember where I put the quarry. It was a while ago we set that thing up. Let's take a look. I did put a waypoint on it. I do believe on... For the quarry and that is or this way i know we put it a few hundred blocks away from the base just so it would not interfere with anything that we're doing but yeah we're going to go ahead and pick this thing up and we are going to move it i am kind of curious to see how much gas is left in reserve on this thing because i do believe we were using the ethylene gas yeah we had a gas tank put over here with a gas burning generator if i remember correctly uh powering this thing yeah, I definitely want to move this so it is over in the swamp area. Yeah, I think we can also get those gems from the ocean and deep oceans. Uh, so it is not just the Corallium infested swamp. I think it also spawns in the regular swamp too. I don't know if any of those are better than the others. I would imagine the ocean would be better than the deep ocean because the deep ocean says it only spawns at Y level 20 and below. So yeah, you get less of it per area. Uh, how much gas do we have here? Oh, we have so much still. Okay. Yeah, let's just go ahead and pick this whole thing up. Good. All right, I'll leave the waypoint here for later so we can remember where to put it back down again. Uh, so we want to go uh, back over to the swamp, which is... Let me press J here. Uh, we want to set it... I guess we'll set it like over here somewhere. So let's see, yeah, that's a new quarry portal. Okay, so I'll meet you guys over there. We'll set it up and hopefully we'll be able to get some of the Corallium ingots, or I guess the gems going pretty soon. All right guys, so I just went back to the base and I turned on the pipe that is pulling the items out of the ender chest here. That way we have more room. Uh, so I wanna make sure that the quarry is going into the correct area for mining. So we want it to be either in the ocean, right? The ocean or the infested swamp, or I think the swamp, but I think we'll just put it over into this quadrant over here. So first thing I want to do, I don't know how this thing is set up, where this is going, but let's go ahead and do the preview mode. We'll click that button. That should put a box around that should show us exactly where things are happening. Now you can see on the mini map, there is some blue stuff over here. So we are on this quadrant, right? Uh, so we want to go, it, it should actually fill in, yeah, you can see the stuff right there. So that is where we have it mining. So we want that to kind of be that same direction, which is, that's the Z coordinate, but we want X to be this way. So let's turn off the preview mode. And we will pull this card out, shift right click on it. So we want, I think this is X, right? So we want that to be in the positive direction. So we'll place that back in there, do preview mode again, and hopefully, yeah, that goes in this direction. So that's the way we want that to work. Uh, why is that? Oh, there's a lily pad there. It's like, why is that not working? <laughs> okay, so now we know that it's gonna go in the right direction. The ocean should have those gems for us. We can, why the heck? How did, why is that turn on its side? What is that all about? That was looking just fine until I left and they came back. Uh, let me grab a single pick. And yeah, that gas tank does not look right. So that should be right like that. All right, everything's fine. We have that ultimate gas tank. 
let's turn this thing on okay so that's gonna start mining in this general area we can turn the preview off we don't care about that anymore all of that will go away yeah all of that stuff just kind of goes away it's gonna take a second for it to update on the mini map but that's fine uh let's just kind of peek in here make sure we're getting ores and stuff yeah looks like everything's happening just fine now a lot of these ores were kind of full up on at the base um yeah pretty much the only thing we're really caring about right now is a corallium gem and now another thing we could do to speed this up i do believe it said that it only mines at y40 and below so we could switch this let's take that out one more time we want this to go let's see we want this to be how do we get this thing to be minus 40 and below? I think if we set this to be 80, why 80 and then put it at a negative 80. So we, that's going at 64 and below if we have Y 28. So maybe we want this to be Y 80 and go minus 40. I think I'm not, I'm not 100% sure on that, but I think that should get us going more in the direction we want to be for these ores. Uh, so it's going to not mine anything for a little while since it already went through that chunk. I took that card out. I put it back in. We turned the lever on and off. So now it's going back through stuff that it's already mined. But once it gets past that point, we should start being in the area where it should find the Corallium gems that we want and all the other resources. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to sit here. Well, first thing I need to do, actually, before we do anything else, let's go ahead and load the chunk this is in. This might be in one of two chunks. I'll just go ahead and claim and load both of those yeah hopefully this is going to work i'm going to go back to the base look at the drawer that we put the corallium gems in yeah here we go now we're getting new stuff and make sure that we are getting that stuff because if we're not this is all just kind of a waste of time but it did say that oceans are where you can find this as well so i'm going to head back there keep my eye on it and we'll be back guys oh my goodness guys so yeah, those Corallium gems do work in a compacting drawer, and we just now reached the 72 Corallium gem clusters that we needed. We have eight loose ones after that, but my goodness. Uh, that took a while, even with the quarry going. This is not a fortune quarry, so I guess that's to be expected. It looks like those only stack to 16 at a time. All right, so let's get over here real quick. So we needed these things around... I cannot remember what these go around now. So let's look at the uses of them. We wanted these things. So we need a Bissell stone. A Bissell stone. Now we only have 13 of those. Hmm. I think we might have to do a little bit of... Is it the portal block that makes that stuff? Like we could use the... Uh, the keystone thing to make more of these yeah that's a bizzle stone so if we go outside we can make a few of those portals i do believe and then we should be able to mine them and get the abyssal stone that way but i do think we have to go to that dimension regardless but we, let's go and spawn a few of these portals in here might as well it's not going to hurt anything as far as i know i'll just go and break all these we get a few of that abyssal stone without having to go anywhere just take a few seconds pretty easy to get this stuff i do believe i am kind of surprised that they made it so it just spawns the stuff all the time like that but you know that's fine with me we will just go and use that like so okay so now we should have enough of that abyssal stone to make all these different things that we want uh oh you know what it's got to be stone not just cobblestone it does need to be stone all right so i don't remember how many of these are but let's just go ahead and do half a stack i think that'll be just fine we can run that through our alloy smelter over here, which will make enough of these. So we needed, I think, 18 of those for those two blocks. Or is it nine? Maybe it's just nine of those because they double up. All right, well, let's just try nine anyway. Let's see where we get with that. All right, so we have nine of those chunks. Now we can take those and put those through the alloy smelter as well. And that'll give us two ingots each, which should give us the two blocks of these that we need did i miscalculate that no we have 18 of those all right so back downstairs we can take these and turn that into two blocks of refined corallium looks like we have two ingots remaining that must be from previously when we did this stuff uh so now that we have those 
we should be able to go ahead and do the other things we were looking for. So that was the transmutator, I believe, is what we needed this for. All right, so we need Corallium Brick, which comes from the Corallium Stone, which I think we have to get from that other dimension. I think so. We also need the bucket of this stuff. So let's grab a bucket. Yeah, you know, you know, I'll just grab two buckets. We'll go to that other dimension. Now, I think people were telling me that those dragons that spawn there only spawn because we were flying. If we weren't flying, they won't spawn. I assume they're still going to be there when we go back. So we might have to deal with those for a little bit. I don't think that's going to be that big of an issue, but just something that we're going to have to be aware of. All right, so let's get down to that other dimension. So we're looking for... What is the things that we're looking for? We're looking for Corallium Stone and then the liquid. And that liquid stuff was all over the place. So I don't think we're going to have a problem finding that. Yeah, let's go ahead and go to this dimension real quick. Oh, boy. Yeah. Okay, so we killed that dragon. Did that dragon just go into the overworld? Oh, boy. Yeah, I see two of the dragons here. Looks like this one is one more hit. Okay, we're fine. So I think we had the Corallium Plague. Yeah, and I don't know what that... I think that might have been from the dragons touching us or whatever. Uh, let's go ahead and grab this and that. Okay, these guys are all over the place. Leave him alone. Uh. Oh, that's a Shoggoth over there. I was like, what is that that I'm seeing? Okay, so what is this right here? This is Abyssal Stone. So we need Corallium Stone. Is that what these were? I don't remember. I guess we'll go ahead and come over here real quick and just kind of see what we can see. I think this might be it. Oop. This is Corallium Cobblestone. Yes, that is what we're looking for. Okay, so pretty much what we need to do is get to the top of one of these and mine them all the way down. I think this might spawn in those dragon things again, but you know, whatever. Oh, oh man, getting up there is going to be a pain. Did we do it? Okay, I think we did it. Yeah, so Corallium Cobblestone. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and chop one of these things all the way down and collect these blocks. Cool. I guess I could mine a little bit more of this stuff. I don't know if that really matters or not. Anyway, I'll go ahead and finish collecting the rest of these things. Yeah, it looks like more of those dragons have spawned down there. I'll go ahead and finish collecting a little bit more of this stuff. Why am I seeing things flash down there? What is that is flashing? That's so weird. Anyway, let me grab this. We'll go back to the overworld and we will continue on. All right, guys. So I grabbed the rest of the Corallian cobblestone from there. I put it through our furnace. It smelts it into the stone, smelts it again into the brick. And there we go. This is what we need for our transmutator. Awesome. So this thing's still got four uses left on it. And then we got another bucket of this liquid Corallium if we need that for some other purpose. But yeah, transmutator. So I believe we needed end stone to put through that in order to do something else. And I don't know if this requires power or how this thing works. Maybe it requires a liquid Corallium. Let's just set it down and take a look at it for a second. So if I put this in there, does that do anything? It doesn't look like that's doing anything, does it? So if we look at the recipes, it does show that there is something. Maybe that is the liquid corallium that it needs. Okay, so let me grab that. We'll just put this in the bottom here and see what happens. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that is working. So that is how that works. So that will transmute this uh, end stone into... Oh, yeah, this X or Ethaxium, I think. Uh, and then I can't remember... I had some notes written down. I think we needed eight of these blocks in order to do what we needed to do here. So let me just go ahead and leave the correct amount in there. Yeah, and I think we have to take these and then smelt them. Let's check uses of this stuff. Yeah, we smelt those into the brick and then those turn into these bricks. And then those are finally using a crafting recipe for something for our hellfire forge i think we might have to go back and get this abyssal stone no you know what i think smelting the cobblestone into this and we can craft that okay so let's wait for the rest of these to happen i will smelt those turn them into the bricks 
and then turn our abyssal stone into what we need here and we'll be back guys all right guys in a few moments later we have everything ready to go for our hellfire forge yeah that's not so bad at all okay so now that we have the hellfire forge we are going to need this thing in order to make the arcane ashes so we do that with the redstone we might make a few of these so let's let's look at doing like i don't know four of those so redstone we need white dye or some kind of bone meal so probably for those, I think it was coal and gunpowder is the other things of this that we need. Then gunpowder. Okay, so the Helmfire Forge. Oh, we also need the demonic wills. Yeah, another thing we were going to do is we were going to make the sword that we could uh, kill enemies without using the snare. I'll have to go back through. Yeah, the snare zero. I'll have to go back through and figure out what it is that we need in order to craft that. But for right now, let's head over. I guess we'll put it in this general area since we have our alchemy table here. So the Hellfire Forge, we need demonic will here. And I think that fills this up as we use it. I don't know. We'll go and do all that. All right. So that is it even using any of the will quality? Maybe it's not. Okay, we need a demonic will in there before it crafts, but it doesn't look like it's using any of the power from the demonic will. I'm not sure how that works. Oh, these things do not stack. Okay. So there's that. And finally, one last one. Maybe you don't have to... Maybe these have multiple uses. I can't remember how that works. Like I said, I've done the um, blood magic in 1.10 only once before. That was with XB... And that was with it when we were playing Sky Factory 3, and that was a little while ago. Okay, so we need the Arcane Ash, we need Redstone, and then we needed, I think, a Blank Slate. So let's grab Redstone and a Blank Slate. And, yeah, I'll just come over here. So I remember with the Arcane Ashes, you right click this on the ground and it draws a little circle. Now I can't remember the order that you do this. It might be the Blank Slate first and then Redstone. That might be wrong. It might be the other way around. Let me right click this again. So we'll try Redstone first. Oh yeah, okay, so that changes it. And then we'll do a Blank Slate. Aha! Yeah, the animation for Blood Magic is really cool. I like that. Now, after a few seconds, it should make the item. There it is. Cool. So there's our Divination Sigil. So we have 1,900 LP in our network, and we couldn't see that before. Uh, it does say this is a Tier 2 now that we're holding this thing, right? Now, if we right-click on here, yeah, it says the current capacity, the Tier and how much is in there. Now, why that's not going onto our weak blood orb and into our network, I'm not entirely sure why not. Uh, the next thing we could do, though, is we could move this altar into such a position that we can put into the Tier 3 or potentially Tier 4 stages, and that might be what we're going to want to do. Now, one of these stages, and I don't remember if it's Tier 4 or Tier 5, does require beacons, and I think that might be Tier 5. Uh, I'll have to go through and figure out uh, the size of the, the altar. I think there's that book that we had, um, this book here. I can't remember if this book shows us how to get the altar into the different sizes. There's something we can do with this. Uh, so let me just do a little bit of research here, figure out what it is we need to do, and then we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, well, it looks like the next thing that we need to do is to make the next tier blood orb. So in this mod pack, we have to use a block of redstone in the blood and the blood altar. I was going to say the blood magic. Yeah, the blood magic altar, whatever. A block of redstone in the blood altar. It has to use five buckets of life essence in order to convert into the next tier orb. So once that's done, we should be able to do some stuff with our incense altar, which will allow us to get more life essence into the blood altar by using our sacrificial dagger. Now, a thing that I was just reading about this a little bit ago, uh, the incense altar. So it said, I, I thought my sacrificial dagger looked different. It said 
Uh, if we were in within like five blocks of the incense altar, our dagger would change, and that's what it is. It has been upgraded. It's got a different look about it than when we originally made it. But yeah, it said that this was going to be producing particles or whatever. I never noticed that when it first transformed. But yeah, apparently if you're within this block for like five seconds with the dagger, it transforms into the new look and then the particles go away. So I never really noticed that the altar was doing anything. I guess the incense altar was doing anything. And that is why, uh, because it's not really doing anything at this point. Now, you can also use the divination sigil on there. If you right click on there, it says the current tranquility and the current bonus. Uh, the default bonus is 20% and we can increase the tranquility, which will increase that bonus by using our weak blood orb here. Uh, or I'm sorry, our apprentice blood orb. Uh, so let's go ahead and right click on that. That will bind it to us. Now, I don't know, can we put this in here? Yeah, so that is now drawing the essence out of the altar and that's putting it into our LP network. I don't know why the weak orb wasn't doing that. But yeah, so we can right click with the divination sigil and see that our LP is going up. And we can also see here that this is going down. So now we don't have to waste any of the life essence that's in the altar when we move this thing, because we will have to move it eventually. Uh, but anyway, now that we have that orb, we should be able to come over here. Now I was looking, these path blocks, yeah, it's just planks plus the orb. I don't know if that costs anything to craft it. Let's just take a look real quick. So we have these and then this, that's the wrong one. This, there we go. There's 16 of those. Now back to the book, it was saying, let's see if I can find it real quick. Yeah. Okay. So it says of course, just an additional 20% is all well and good, but they can be further expanded by expanding the range of the influence of the incense altar. If you place a row of three wooden path blocks, two blocks away, from the incense altar in each of the cardinal directions, making sure that all path blocks are on the same Y level up to five blocks up or down from the incense altar. You can define an area. All right, so let's do that. So it says two blocks away from this thing. I don't know where we should be putting this altar and I don't know how this affects our dagger. Anyway, uh, so two blocks away. I don't know if that's this block or this one. So I guess we're going to figure this out together. Let me go ahead and grab my pickaxe. I'm going to assume they mean right here. We go two blocks away. This that might actually, you know what? That might need to be closer. So these things are touching. Yeah. Cause if it's this block and this block, they would be touching. I think it has to be this one. Again, we'll find out. This one diagonally this way, and then these guys. So, what this should do is increase the influence of our altar and give us more for our dagger when we use it. So, let's place these guys like this that is in a row of three, two blocks away on all four cardinal directions. Now, if we right click on this thing, doesn't look like that is taking effect. Uh, did it have to be above the altar? Hmm. Let me put the altar down one block and see what it does then. Right click it with this thing. No, it might need to, these blocks might need to be out one more block. Okay. Let me play with this and see if I can get it to work. All right, guys. So this is a new part of blood magic that I really haven't experienced before. So I had to do a little bit of trail and area. And for some reason I couldn't comprehend <laughs> what the book was trying to tell me. So yeah, I had this right before. So uh, these blocks are kind of touching three blocks away or whatever. Or I mean, three wide, two blocks away from the altar. Uh, what I didn't understand is that the modifiers that we need to do have to go on top of these blocks. So if I place water here on top of this block, I have it so it flows over here and goes down so it just doesn't go everywhere. But if we right click on the altar, we can see that it now has a bonus of 26%, which is pretty awesome. So things like farmland affected, potatoes affected, you can use any kind of crops. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I am going to use both potato and carrot. So now we have two farmland here. If we right click, we can see we're at 36%. Now if I put a potato here and right click, we're at 42%. Now if I put a carrot here, it's going to increase it, but not as much. So now we're at 45%. Uh, other things that will affect it, netherrack. So we can do that. We're now at 50%, which is pretty good. 
Uh, we can put a log somewhere around here. That'll affect it as well. So now we're at 56. We can put another log if we want to. Again, it won't affect it as much, but yeah, it does affect it. So now we're at 59. I think if we put another log here, that brings us up to 60. Now, that was about the highest I could get it, 60%. But that number, 626, I think we did have that higher. So I'll place a few more logs here. And yeah, now we're at 698. Uh, we can put lava, I believe, and we can also put life essence. I don't think I can get life essence out of this. Oh, wait, no. If you put a bucket in there, does that turn that into a bucket of life essence? If it does, that will be kind of cool, because then we could use that on this as well to give us more of a bonus. Oh, yeah, it does. That's kind of cool. All right. So let's uh, open up a little spot here and see if that does anything, since that's a different material. Okay, so what was our previous? I don't remember. Yeah, we're at 756 now, but it's still a 60% bonus. So it's not increasing the bonus percent, but the tranquility is going up. I don't know if that does anything for us, having that number higher or whatever. But anyway, I haven't tried this yet. Having our dagger with all this tranquility near the altar. So we are currently at 1,810. And I believe it was like 2,200 without the altar nearby so let's do this again uh so we're at 4690 well it should be about 40 percent more than what we were doing before because this was giving us like a 20 percent bonus previously so yeah we should be getting a little bit more is it worth all this stuff i don't know uh, eventually we'll probably be doing the ritual where you can have mobs spawn under the altar and they take damage and they just automatically fill up the altar every time they take tick damage so we won't really have to worry about that but for the meantime i guess we're filling up the altar that's pretty good yeah we can fill this up in like three or four right clicks um we just gotta eat food to get our hp back or get some kind of regeneration so yeah i'm pretty happy with that so we'll have to i'm trying come on hurry up i'm trying to be able to eat again so we can use our saturation to heal our health uh, so I'll go ahead and take a look off camera here, figure out what it is that we need to do in order to progress a little bit further here. We've made some pretty good progress into blood magic. We do want to get up to a tier five altar or was it tier four, tier four or five in order to be able to take, um, draconium and smelt that directly in the blood altar into the ingot without having to do that other crazy stuff. That's where we want to go. It's going to take a little bit more experimentation and some more progress to get to that point. But this is kind of cool. I do like it. Anyway, guys, we're going to go and wrap the episode up here for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.